through the courtesy of the Smithsonian Institution, we show the development of the typewriter, starting with the Burt Typographer of 1829. Next, the Scholes machine of 1868, the Remington of 1873. This is the Calligraph, made in 1883. Next, the Hammond typewriter, made in 1884. About 1900, the Smith Premier appeared, followed by the Blickenderfer in the same year. This is the first portable, a Corona, and this is the Bennett Pocket typewriter. In addition to these standard machines now in use, modern business has created needs for special typewriters, such as wide carriage machines, justifying typewriters with which to make straight right margins, book type adjusted spacing machines which turn out copy like this, special forms writers, calculating machine typewriters, and card punch typewriters which turn out cards like this. This is the Remington Noiseless. The Burl. The Royal. The Underwood. The Woodstock. The Elsie Smith. The Remington Standard. The Electromatic. This, of course, is the keyboard. This row of keys is called the home row. The four keys on the left of the home row, A, F, D, and F are the guide keys for the left hand, while the four keys at the right of this row, semicolon, L, K, and J, are the guide keys for the right hand. These keys are struck by the fingers of your left hand. These by the fingers of your right hand. Each finger strikes certain keys as illustrated in the fingering chart of your instruction book. All your finger motions are learned in their relation to the guide keys on the home row. Acquire the feel for F, R, F, 4, K, I, K, 9, D, E, D, 3, J, N, and so forth. Your strokes should be definite, light, quick, and even. Hit the centers of the key. The key should be struck with the rounded tips of your fingers. If you strike the keys with your fingernails, you are apt to have aching fingers or chipped nails. If you want to become a good typist, it will be advisable to follow a conservative nail style. Stroke the keys with your fingers curved. When you strike upper or lower row keys, return the fingers quickly to the home row. Don't let your fingers cling to a key like this. Don't blur your motion from key to key. Keep your... 
At the start, hit each key just as fast as you will when you are a good typist, but have long, even pauses between strokes. During these pauses, you think and plan the next stroke. A person who strokes keys this way will never be a good, fast typist until she changes her stroking form. You see, there are no pauses, no spare time between strokes. But a person who starts stroking this way has considerable spare time between strokes. Later, the spare time is cut down. More strokes are made per minute, and this is the rate. Still later, it becomes this. Finally, there is no spare time left between strokes, and the person is typing as fast as he or she can. Exercises will develop your keystroking. To develop your precision and rhythm, strike the home row keys alternately from the outside in and then out again. Later, you will be able to speed this up like this. To develop your finger agility and control, use two fingers of each hand to strike the keys on the three rows in an alternate figure eight pattern. Later, you will be able to speed up this exercise. Exercise can also be done with the middle two fingers. And with the two end fingers. Learn to gauge your touch or stroking so as to produce copy of an even blackness. This is the mark of a good typist. Look at your type sheet. Your copy should not look uneven like this. Neither should your periods and other punctuation marks cut through the paper like this. On the electromatic, the type bars are operated electrically. First, you start the motor by pushing this switch. Then strike the space bar several times to see if your motor is running. If there is no carriage movement, you'd better check the electrical connection. The motor turns this power roll. which operates the type by turning these cams. All type impressions are mechanically made uniform, regardless of how hard you strike the key. A light touch on the keys is all you need. Be sure to shut off the motor when you stop typing for any length of time. Most people do their spacebar stroking with the right thumb. 
Left-handed people may use their left thumb. However, do all your spacing with one thumb. Hold your thumb naturally, not here, but here, and stroke the space bar with the lower side of your thumb. When the shift key is depressed, your typewriter prints capital letters and the special characters above the number and punctuation keys. When using the shift key with the left hand, keep your F finger on the home key. When your right hand is used, keep your J finger on the home key so that your guide positions are not lost. At first, shift evenly in three counts. Shift key down, key stroke, shift key up. Later, with experience, you can speed up the action this way. Remember to start this way. One, two, three. One, two, three. If the shift key is not pressed all the way down on manual machines, floating capitals will result. Avoid these incomplete strokes and poor timing of your three count shift motions, and floating capitals will be eliminated. To write a number of capital letters in succession, press down the shift lock key. This shifts the type in some machines and raises the carriage in others and locks it so that only capital letters and uppercase characters will be written. To release the lock, press down either shift operated by the motor. requires only a light touch on the shift key. On the burrows, the operation is identical. To backspace, use your little finger on this, like this, for additional backspaces. Frequent use of the backspace key for striking over lightly struck letters takes poor stroking form and waste time. And don't backspace to strike over incorrectly struck letters. Those are errors which you should not have made, and if made, should be erased neatly. On the electromatic, the space key is operated electrically and requires only a light touch. The tabulator key is operated with the little finger of your right hand. Without taking your eyes from the copy, the key is held down until the carriage reaches the set position. On machines equipped with bar tabulators, indent by stroking the tabulator bar with the first finger of your right hand. On the electromatic, the tabulator key is on the left. It is only necessary to touch the tabulator key. You need not hold it down until the carriage stops. The carriage return lever is usually at the left. This lever returns the carriage and at the same time operates the line space mechanism so that the paper is set for a new line. On manually operated machines, learn to return the carriage with a quick circular movement of your left hand, avoiding unnecessary effort and lost motion. Learn to judge how hard to hit the carriage return lever so that the carriage returns the whole way without banging against the margin stop. That was not hard enough. That was too hard. That was better. Your hand should drop from the lever when it is about in line with the left frame of the machine and should be back on the keys when the carriage reaches the right stop.
Now watch this in slow motion. For additional line spaces, after the carriage has returned, strike the carriage return lever as often as required. On the electromatic machine, the carriage is returned by touching this key with the little finger of your right hand. The burrows works in the same manner. As the carriage returns, the paper is automatically advanced for the next line. If additional line spaces are required on the burrows or the electromatic, touch the carriage return key lightly as many times as necessary. Now let's see about paper insertion. This is the paper table. This is the paper guide. This is the paper bale. And this is the platen. The paper guide can be moved to any point on the paper table. Its position in relation to the carriage or line scale is determined from this scale on the paper table. Elsie Smith, Remington, Underwood, and Woodstock machines have similar scales. The paper tables on the Electromatic and Burroughs machines do not have line scales. Therefore, the position of the paper guide is determined by inspection. The paper rests against the paper table and the paper guide as it is fed into the machine. The paper bale holds the paper close to the platen. This prevents paper drumming, keeps the paper from flapping, and makes your type impression sharp and even. These rubber rolls should divide your sheet in even thirds. Otherwise, this may happen if you turn your paper back. rolls are out of sight under the platen. These rolls and the platen feed paper into the machine and hold the paper in position. To insert paper rapidly, arrange it so it can be handled easily. Pick up the sheets with your left hand, fingers above and your thumb below, near the middle of the left edge of the sheet. Place the sheets on the paper table with the left edge against the paper guide and the top edge firmly touching the feed roll. With your right hand, give the platen knob a rapid twirl and turn the sheets to the writing line. As you let go of the platen knob, bring your right hand forward and with your right thumb, move the paper bale in place so that the paper is held firmly under the paper bale. You can do this in five counts. One, two, three, four, five. Now watch the counts and motions blend into one continuous action. Try it on a machine with a different kind of paper bale. When you use a carbon pack, be sure to use smooth carbon and insert the pack squarely in the machine. If you don't, this may happen.
This means wasted paper and lost time. Improper feeding also means crooked paper. When this happens, use the paper release lever, which releases the pressure on the feed rolls and permits the paper to be adjusted. Line up your paper with the paper guide. Then turn the paper down and check it with the alignment scale. The paper release lever is always back of and inside the platen knob and projects upward like this. The electromatic, however, has the release lever at the left. Be sure to use the paper release lever when you take out letters or copy. This is not advisable. It bothers other people, wears the line space ratchet and gears, causes carbon paper smears, and rubs the paper sizing into the platen making it glossy and causing paper slippage later. The carriage can be moved to the right or left by holding the platen knob with your fingers and pressing the carriage release lever with your thumb. Machines have two carriage release levers, one at the right and one at the left. When you understand the basic technique, the next most important thing is intelligent and purposeful practice. Your forearm, wrist, and back of hand should slant upward parallel to the slant of the keyboard. Keep your hands and fingers in a natural, easy, working position. Drop your hands into your lap and relax. Look at your hands. When you walk, rest, or sleep, your hands do not look like this or this, but like this. Without changing the position of your hands and fingers, place your hands on the keyboard. Fingertips down, wrists flat. That's your typing position, with your fingers on the second or guide row of keys. Your wrist should be comfortably down and in line with your forearm, palms close to the keyboard and frame. This position enables your fingers to reach easily over the keys and eliminates tension. You should have almost no movement in your wrist and forearm. Read copy easily, without eye strain. Head erect, chin up. If you do much typing, some form of copy holder is useful. This surface keeps the copy at right angles to my line of vision. Both the top and the bottom of the copy are equally distant from my eyes. The real secret about motion is to use as little as possible. Do the necessary motions well. Eliminate the unnecessary ones. With your forearms and the back of your hands parallel to the slant of the keyboard, typing motions are confined to your fingers. Some typists use these finger motions. Or these.
Their fingers travel miles through the air and unnecessarily use much energy every typing day. These useless motions give the impression of great speed, but in reality, they waste time, cause errors, and slow down the typist. Such as wide carriage machines. Justifying typewriters with which to make straight right margins. Book type adjusted spacing machines which turn out copy like this. Special forms writers, calculating machine typewriters, and card punch typewriters which turn out cards like this. This is the Remington Noiseless. This is the Calligraph, made in 1883. Next, the Hammond typewriter, made in 1884. About 1900, the Smith Premier appeared, followed by the Blickendurfer in the same year. This is the first portable, a Corona, and this is the Bennett Pocket typewriter. In addition to these standard machines now in use, modern business has created needs for special typewriters. The Burl. The Royal. The Underwood. The Woodstock. The Elsie Smith. Through the courtesy of the Smithsonian Institution, we show the development of the typewriter, starting with the Burt Typographer of 1829. Next, the Scholes machine of 1868, the Remington of 1873, the Remington Standard, the Electromatic. This, of course, is the keyboard. This row of keys is called the home row. The four keys on the left of the home row a, S, D, and F are the guide keys for the left hand. 